G'day guys, I'm Tim. I'm Aaron. Hey guys. We're here today to run you through the true cost of owning this 79 <laughs> for the last three years. Yeah, we're talking breakages, repairs, yep. trays and canopies. Everything. Engines. Engines. <laughs> uh, everything. Everything. originally built this car for R&D testing and to go on the full drive 24-7 trips. Um, the very first trip it did was the Kimberley, but it had a little bit of a life right before that one. <laughs> so we picked the car up, I think we paid about 38k second hand off a young fella in town, it oh, had yeah. stacks, it was pretty <laughs> loose. And then uh, we built it all out. We sent it for about 5,000 Ks and we went to go and get it tuned and dropped the oil and it was very, very glittery. So No good. No good. It's just been ongoing from there. Yeah, so <laughs> as soon as that was done, we basically finished the series, wrapped it all up and then I think within 5,000 Ks we were putting a brand new short block engine from Toyota in this car. <laughs> So we basically run the car in, driving it to the Kimberley. When we did the engine, we replaced all of the auxiliary components as well. So we upgraded the turbo, bigger, radiator, um, bigger radiator, and yeah, basically tried to bulletproof it as best we could so it would be really reliable on the tracks. Yeah, with these trips that we do, there's nothing more annoying than having to fix oh. your own car. So we put a lot of time, effort, money into keeping this vehicle up to scratch and the main, keep on top of the maintenance to keep it as reliable as possible. Yeah, absolutely. A lot yeah. of time goes into this thing. Yeah, and because we're mainly out there, one, it's a marketing thing, but two, uh, most importantly for us is our R&D. So we want to thrash this car. Yeah. It's been <laughs> built for a reason. Yeah, we want to give it absolute hell and that's why we build it the way we do and we maintain it the way we do. So every time we come back from a trip, it gets stripped down or looked over, made sure it's right to go on the next one. So, yeah, I'm yeah. currently prepping this car right now for nearly seven weeks away. Yeah. So it's going to be a big one up the Cape, yep. Simpson Desert. So yeah. yeah, a lot of time goes into this vehicle just to maintain it. Yeah. It's all part of the program. Absolutely. So I guess we'll get into it. So you saw the Kimberley trip. We basically ran the car in over the Kimberley trip. We also used it as a bulldozer with Harry. <laughs> Me and Harry out the front just driving through scrub. I was talking to Ronnie at the Brisbane show the other day and he basically said we went the completely wrong way and there was basically a paved road about 100 metres off. So <laughs> <laughs> We're just following your GPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My GPS. <laughs> so my GPS was the original Garmin yeah. track that was put in like 25 years ago. It is the actual Carson River track, the yeah. one we did. It's changed a bit lately. It's changed a bit over the last few years to make it a little bit smoother, <laughs> but so. Let's go front to back. Front to Let back. See. What have you broken? What have I broken? All right. There's been a lot of things. How many trays have we put well, on it? Harry broke an engine, so we'll leave that in <laughs> Harry. <laughs> yeah. It's a good odd 30 grand. Yeah. Or so whatever that's, that costs. Yeah, so Harry's on an engine, right? Yeah. Um, what have what, you done? What did you break anything in the Kimberley? In the Kimberley, we the actually Cape York. Uh, so Kimberley we did really well. On the trail, we had no flat tires and that's uh, which was unbelievable. But after that trip I fell in love with those tires and I refused to put anything else on any of the other vehicles. Yeah, we run the Kumo I mean, MT71s on, on all the vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Now um, we dinted a few mirrors, we didn't we didn't have a radiator guard on the bottom, so we dinted a bit of that, but all of that stuff was just superficial. We just pushed hard for a fair few days there, 20 days, yeah, a lot of Ks. Low range, heavy kilometres. The hard wearing part of the Kimberley was after the camera stopped rolling on that trip and we finished filming and we're at Kalumbaru or just outside, we weren't allowed in due to COVID. So we jumped in the cars and we basically did the Gibb River Road in about 12 and a half hours. So it was about 100 Ks an hour on dirt as fast as we could go and that really treated the drive line poorly. We ended up having to replace, when we got back to Darwin a couple of days later, we found out that we'd done hubs, yeah. we'd done um, a diff cool. centre, yeah. I think. And then because when we got trapped in the water, the diffs were full of water because our breathers were too low. Yeah. All these things. Punters. It's and then, never ending. No, and then I, and I think we blew some shocks and things at that point too. So it was in a pretty sorry state after the Kimberley and then we had two or three weeks at 
Darwin to get it ready to get all the way back across to the Cape because it wasn't worth driving all the way back to Newcastle to do the repairs or, yeah. and it wouldn't have made it. So we had to get it done up there. Um, yeah. From there it's just been ongoing. You know, since those trips we've done Lorella Springs, Cape York, of times the Cape High York, Country. Yeah. Yep. Um, we originally built this for long range touring, yep. remote touring. Yeah, yeah. And then some of the trips I've been doing of late. Harder stuff. Harder stuff. You yeah. know, we throw the meter canopy on there just as a lightweight, more versatile sort of hardcore option. Yeah. And we've been doing the Glasshouse Mountains, which yeah. this is not made for the Glasshouse <laughs> Mountains, if you've seen some of those episodes on 24 Drive 24 yeah, 7. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, up in the Wadigans as well. So, you know, the harder stuff, yeah. Yeah, we've, I've done a, you've done one mirror. I've we got done a phone a, call saying, uh, hey, Az, I staked the mirror. I Can did. you sort me out a new mirror? <laughs> stake a mirror. big tree went straight through it. <laughs> I was driving in Lorella Springs <laughs> and I was trying to catch up to a, uh, I'll give Harry the photo so he can put it in, but I was dropping the grader driver back to his grader. He was walking, I think, 25 k's back to camp to get to his car to drive another 40 k's back to the homestead. So I was like, you need to get in my car and I'll drive you back because he'd already walked 16. So I was like, <laughs> this is out of control. So I'm hooning back. I get back to camp. Um, as hospitable as he was, he gave me a rum can. We had a rum can and then I turned around and drove back to meet up with the boys. And on the drive back, I was in the brush and I was hooning along and a big stick went straight through the mirror, scared the living life out of me. So yeah, but I'll find, I'll find that photo of the the old digger that was out in the scrub, you wouldn't read about it, mate. That was wild. I think... No, well, I've done both the mirrors yeah. nearly twice now. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I've done the doors as well. Yeah. Rubbing up against banks and bouncing into trees because this thing can get in, a bit wild. In your defence, <laughs> yeah, you might... Got to be some defence here. <laughs> so, you've been doing a lot more of the harder stuff. Yeah. So, I've done a few trips to Coffs in this car. We've done a few of the harder tracks yeah. and bits and pieces, but I never pushed it, I quite think, to the levels you've done. Yeah. I've done a lot more of these big touring trips where you might do two or three hard things in a day, but you're not yeah. doing consecutive back to back yeah, to back it's just stuff. Punishing tracks, especially on this vehicle. Yeah. Where it's not designed. No, and for it's that a, rock crawling and no, hardcore it's a big, stuff. It's a big car. Exactly. It's a big, big car. And so then, you've yeah. dented two doors. Two doors. Alright. I've done the mirrors. Yeah. I just found this today as well. Yeah. I've actually dented the rope rail here. Have you? Yeah. You've done alright there. So that's not too bad. <laughs> and all of that goes back into our R&D testing on the trays and boxes. The, yeah, you've given, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> since you've taken it on, aesthetically, the car does not look as good as it used no, to. No, it doesn't. I've got some before and after yeah. photos of when you let me take over the yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look the same. But I'm just going to wait until I can get back in it and then I'll make it look pretty again. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, I did a Cape York trip. Yep. I got bogged for a million hours, hours and hours, many, and, many hours. hours. and it was pretty bad bog. Yep. And then we got out of there and we drove along the dirt and I didn't realise that we'd been driving all the way back and we were just pulling into Cohen and I went to do a UE to turn into the service station. I didn't realise I'd still had it in four wheel drive, oh, four wheel drive high. <laughs> and because we've been doing 150 k's to get to where we were, everything was pretty warm, the tyres were warm, it was a hot day, the tar was hot. <laughs> I turned, as I turned to go into the service station, the front diff exploded everywhere. Oh. It was horrendous. <laughs> so that stranded us in Cohen for a few days. Yep. Uh, we got a diff uh, air freighted in on the mail plane, which is funny, it turned up in a 20 litre bucket like three days later. They got my car onto a hoist next door to the pub, but the hoist, I couldn't get the car high enough on the hoist, or low enough on the ground or high enough on the hoist to open my tent. And everywhere was booked out in town. <laughs> so I'd go and beg for a bed at like a hostel place somewhere. <laughs> and I sleeping in someone's back room, oh, which was pretty funny. But we got, we got the diff in. Um, and Jock and I did that, and that was, that was I, yeah, I don't need to do that again in the dirt. That's no, it's no fun. Not fun at not all. In, not in the dirt. No. Uh, what else have we done for this? Okay, so we've replaced the snorkel. We yeah. went to a talk at Full Stano job here. Yep. We used to have a uh, plastic safari snorkel, and that snorkel was brilliant. I, I rate those things, they're really good. But when we were doing the Teletrack for the first time, yep. and we took this in, 
I'm pretty certain it was Palm Creek, and I always show people this at the shows because this is a true representation of how sketchy some of that stuff is. I, I balked at the top of Palm Creek, <laughs> dropped into it too hard, fell to the side, and I scratched the top of the rope rail and the inside of the rope rail. Yeah, it's all done. To get that to there, that means the car has to be like up there. It just it was it was more terrifying than damage. Yeah. But that what that did was it drove that into the bank. The snorkel ended up filling up with a heap of rocks. So like when we took. The, sn uh, the air cleaner out that night, I had gravel inside the actual snorkel. <laughs> and we cracked, we only cracked the top housing. We didn't actually do any damage to any of this sort of stuff. Yep. But um, we thought if we're going to keep doing that sort of thing, then we should probably put the stainer one. Harder, harder yeah. on. Yeah, for sure. Harder wearing. What a, so before one of the trips that you did, mm. uh, the Lorella Springs trip, yep. we did send it up to Queensland before that trip. Yeah. And another thing that we've done on this is a DM, DMW did it. It's a 4499 GVM yeah. upgrade kit. They so, did yeah, Dwiz diff correction, all dobbers and suspension through it. Yeah. So that's one thing to yeah. add to the list to the end yeah, of yeah, the video. Yeah, so we did, a di we did do a so diff think correction. think about those things. And the one thing with that too came a better leaf pack as well. We went yep. through several iterations. We actually tried to put sliders on the bottom of the leaf pack at yep. one point. Yeah, we gained about 70 mil, I yep. think, in the leaf pack itself. Yeah, in, and dropped it. In clearance. Yeah, when well, the sliders, when they were on, they were so low, like you'll see videos of it. It just gets hung, it got hung up on everything. And everyone ridiculed the crap out of me for these damn leaf springs. Yeah. I used to call the car Sparky. It was yeah. like a, it was like a dog with still nuts, <laughs> no rear legs. <laughs> the, um, the, the one thing I noticed is I picked that diff correction up and the Domo's remote res, when that went in, it transformed the car. It's actually a, quite a knife for a farm truck. Yeah. It's quite nice on road and no, off road. It, it, ha it handles, handles great. really well now. It does. And like on corrugations across the Savannah Way, we did that in like three days or so. Yep. And it, that's a lot of Ks and a lot of Coros. And the thing just gl glid. It felt yeah. like a trophy truck. It yep. felt like a hero arm out mm. just rolling down. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> 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 so as a What's original on the car really is left to only a few things a few from when we here. bought it. Yeah, and when I've come on board. Yep. So, you know, you got your bar work. Yeah, so that's the bar work that came on it. And it's yeah. sort of a hybrid of modern ARB yeah, and you've old got, school you've got your ARB. Yeah, and your old school with the different tubing. But it's actually handled really well, especially for nudge bars, uh, for bar work and brush bars and things. I've, I've destroyed a few in the time, especially on that Hilux. Yeah. Usually but, you'd need rock sliders for some of the tracks yeah. that we've done, but this is all held up really well. Yeah, and we've had a couple of really big hits, yeah, but it's see. been all right. The superior linkage on the front, that for yeah, the long travel arms in yeah. there. And then the gearbox. Gearbox is still new. The gearbox is still it's the one nice. that was it's in there. Good. I changed the transfer case out not long ago. Yeah. Um, before one of the trips up to Barsi. Yeah. So that's brand new transfer or a recode. Recode one. Yeah. So yeah. that's new. Other than that, mate. I don't know. The cab? The, ah, the cab is original. The cab's original. The windscreen is original, but it's getting replaced. It probably needs a new one. We do have a little chip in there. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, and, and I think the steering wheel and the bits and pieces, the stereo no longer works in there. No, you got to use... you got to wear earbuds now. Earbuds in, when Sorry you're driving. Sorry about that. That was my bad. Okay, every time you change the gear, yeah. you'd um, bump the face on the yeah. stereo and it would well, like... Even grabbing the UHF, you yeah, bump yeah. it as well. And it would flick up, and then one day it just flicked up and wouldn't go back down, and I was like, go down go down <laughs> and then it was like and that for a week and then I went, it went down and it went then down. I didn't work anymore <laughs> and completely fell off so, and it's still not working yeah but you it, get used to it yeah <laughs> you do eventually um, yeah, yeah. it's actually not too bad because no. it's um, very loud I know Harry spent many hours sound deadening the cab yeah which I'm very grateful for yeah it's, it still doesn't help <laughs> we could probably do it again. Yeah, it's it's, it's loud. I don't super know. Super loud car. You know, we've got the big muddies. Yeah. You got the rack on top. You got the snorkel. There's so many things you're yeah. competing against. Yeah, they add a lot of noise. Those Stano yeah. ones have definitely noticed a massive difference yeah. to that from the Safari one. Yeah. But the big turbo noises, if you like that sort of stuff. Yeah. After 15 hours, it might get a little long in the tooth. But yeah. other than that, it well, makes a great note. Yeah. Rightio, so, so let's talk about the train canopy. 
So this was the original Evo 2 R&D canopy, absolutely. Yep. It was the first of the production runs right before the Kimberley. So the R&D testing, R &D testing did all that in that phase leading up. Yep. And then we came back and signed off of it, yep. off it as soon as we got the car back to Darwin. So yep. we went over it all and had a good old look. Yep. The tray is the original. The boxes, I'm pretty sure, have been replaced somewhere along the lines here. But and well, the we'll stop jars. doing that because it's... Yeah, but we've kind of... It looks cool. Yeah. It gets used and abused. Yeah. And we don't need to keep replacing it. We know how yeah. they work. Well, everything, I think, we haven't touched this for nearly two years, yeah. realistically making it look pretty again. No. And yeah. like you've rubbed against everything, brushed against everything, and yeah. they all still function, which yeah. is really, really They're good. They're all fine. Um, yeah, the tray canopy in its current form is basically what you get with the new Evo 2 product, yep. so, which is really good and really promising because like when we were doing our testing, it just proved all of the principles that we put into the design and yep. all that thinking in bits and pieces, which is cool. So, so we've got the two canopies, the 1700 yep. and the metery, yep. and we just chop and change between, between touring the two and tough. touring and tough tracks. Yep. And then inside... Like I said, I'm setting this up for the next trip. Yeah. And on on the original one, you're running an 85 litre upright. Yeah. I've swapped it out for the 130. Big boy. To make it, you know, a bit more customizable to what I think the trip. Yeah, yeah. What I think I need on the next trips. And the benefits with all of this is this is a dual cab size canopy. It is the full size dual cab canopy, but if you didn't have that little bit of space there, you would still have all of this space yeah, come through. Yeah, it's all through. the same. So the idea is learn how to live out of it with what we sell the most of, which is that yeah, exactly. 1500 box. Yeah, most Sick. common. Looks cool. Yeah, you got a little drop shelf, pantry. I haven't, I haven't lived with the pantry yet. Like and this is this is the drawer that keeps going from canopy to canopy. This is the same drawer you just same. moved from the single yeah, one to the little the single, one. Yeah, it's out of the single, yeah. So. Ah, very yeah, good. Yeah, we just chop and change as we need, depending on, you know, what troops we're doing. Yeah. We've also got the original big red arc system, yeah. which is our ultimate package. Yeah, aesthetically, few things have changed but it's Nothing. still the same same batteries and everything that you're running in the Kimberley the original Kimberley trip yeah so it's just nothing has changed just the housing around it's yeah. changed slightly a little bit on the way we did the powder warrant. coating here and there yeah aesthetics is just a little same, bit different same. but same same nah I, well, I'm keen to get your feedback on how it's to live out of in this scenario because I always had the 85 litre fridge in here yeah. because I had the drop shelf run all the way through. Yeah. That's where Harry and I kept the chessboard that we never played. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But, like, perfect for, you know, you know, a bit more extra storage up the top for two people. Absolutely. I think this next trip is like three weeks and then three weeks, so it's going to be a lot of time. Yeah. away from town so yeah, yeah i just went with the bigger fridge for this one bigger fridge and i like to run the little separate freezer on the other side yeah, just because kept, kept that for it's nice and easy for all your meat and stuff yeah. like that yeah just ice cream around camp oh, maybe ice cream oh look how <laughs> fancy boy <laughs> there is no coffee machine in here no we run the aero press it's easy nice and simple and easy yeah, ga gas is your friend i reckon but yep. you can definitely definitely run um all your electrical appliances off that yeah anything off that yeah for sure just don't want to be holding an induction cooker in the middle of the Kimberley no. and looking for a PowerPoint because that doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> ah, very good. I like it, mate. I like it a lot. Yeah. The big gas bottle. Yeah. Can't live without it. No, I nice reckon it's... spot on the back corner there. Yeah, yeah. I just grabbed one of these Rhino little tie-down straps and yeah. just um, fastened it down and that thing's lived forever. Yeah. And basically it's a swap and go, so whenever it gets low. I think that's only the second one. We just swap and go yeah we just keep changing um the reason i did that <laughs> the reason for that is i really like the gas cooker yeah um just i've got it set up here throw it on top there and away you go yeah. so it's nice and easy and then it, and that just lives there that drawer comes out a hell of a lot further we take yeah on these trips that we do we take a lot of spares in here we've got you know axles axles and we actually have axles to suit our yeah the dwiz diff, diff. the div, dwiz diff the diff yeah. correction i've actually got to replace a cv into here yeah because i'm running one short you'll see soon on 24 7 that i yeah busted a front axle yeah we've got bearings all miscellaneous nuts and bolts four hubs <laughs> An OBD port reader for not our car because obviously it doesn't work. <laughs> but all your bits in. and pieces that you need, we, yeah. you can we throw some more um, spare yeah. parts inside depending on the trips. And the other one too is we built this kit out over time. Yeah. But 
when we built the kit, we did it with the things we maintain the car with. Yeah. So that way we know we have the right tools in there. Like I know that you've finally got a 52 mil hub socket. Yeah, I think it's in here somewhere. Yeah, 50, 50, it is in, in there, here. definitely is. It's like a 10 mil, it's probably rare as rock yeah, and all shit. That's around there. <laughs> but That'll definitely help. And, and Azza and I actually just keep a little iPhone um, yeah. note yeah, shared, section and shared share notes. notes. And we just share notes on, you know, oh, I broke this on this trip, so be careful because yeah. I put it together or <laughs> Jock put it together or <laughs> <laughs> Graham watched me put it together. Yeah. So that's usually. And did not help? No. Nah. But yeah, just maintaining it out of this drawer has been a godsend and then just having the space to just do the little. There you got a bench. the cooktop. Do repairs, cook your dinner. Cook your dinner and away you go. And then yeah. you're just two seconds away. Yeah. I really like induction cooking and we can definitely do it with this car. There's no two yeah. ways about uh, it. And I run induction cooking in, in my, yeah. my Ranger and I love it. Yeah. But on these trips, you need to be as reliable as possible. And gas yeah. is, or fire is the most reliable yeah, for what we do. When I am cruising locally or yeah. know that on I'm going to be doing some highway Ks and all the rest of it. Or just a it. weekend trip. Yeah. The Induction's fine. killing Killer. It. Killer. Better in wind as well. Yeah, and you could probably put more batteries in, but yeah. I would like that space for storing things. So, yeah, 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 that, yeah. that's where we're at with that, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... You got your shovel? Very, very important. It's probably the number one thing you need to take. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> You've got to bury your business. All the boys have had a turn to that. Yeah. <laughs> I bought that shovel because it looks schmick as it was all stain and it still looks pretty good. There is only one problem with this shovel, and I will tell you what. In the morning when you are wearing pluggers to go and do your business, oh, yeah, you cannot dig a hole no. because it has no fold over. No, you can't doesn't. just punch straight yeah. through your plugger. Yeah, yeah, and I good. figured that out day one <laughs> in a hurry. <laughs> You've got to dig the hole first, you don't dig it after. <laughs> so that's all right. We've got the uh, Archie rooftop tent. We've had a few iterations. Yeah. Don't mind this tent. Yeah, that's pretty good. Doesn't fit as much as I would have liked inside it. No, it just doesn't have the height in it. Nah, and then I, I did like the side opening one that we did have on there because it actually was felt more spacious. Yep. But yeah, it's fine. Does the job. I've slept in it with my kids as well, so yeah, yeah. They've been, we've been away in the car. We got the maxi tracks on the side. Yep. Um, this is a friend of ours from the US. He makes these rad max tracks holders and a whole heap of other accessories. Yeah. Expedition Essentials. Yeah. Jeff's, a, Jeff's yeah, a bloody legend. Absolutely is. Yeah, so we thought, why not stick it on there and give it a little American twist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Inside, this side's pretty simple. Yeah. Like you said before, you got the little chest freezer. Yeah for all your frozen food and everything for the longer trips. That's a killer and I think the reason, we like the uprights because they're really user friendly and all the rest of it. Lightweight. Lightweight, they are a yeah, really light option. So another consideration to think about as well is, you know, you might have a US truck, yep. big F truck or something like that. <laughs> they're so you know, they're super high, the, the bed's up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you put 37s and a six inch lift on them, yeah, which drop is... side is gonna be a big, Big benefit to you yeah, yeah, with that as sure. well. And you don't have to worry so much about the weight. No, and the drop slides are good. So the Clearview product range has the drop slide and it also has that drop down pantry option yeah, as well. Exactly. So if you're in one of those really tall cars that has a big GVM, yeah. they're a cracker of an option yeah, you to don't have need a to worry so much about space. weight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's another thing to think about. You know, if, if you don't know what to do or what you're what you're planning to do, it's always good to give the boys in the office a call. Yeah, yeah. And they can nut it out with you and help make those decisions yeah, they're, on, they're unreal. on your setup. They've got a great pros and cons list for everything and they're yeah. just a big supporter of you getting out there, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Other than that, has you got anything else to show me? Anything else you've broken lately, mate? No, just a little, little gun. Cuts and scratches here. These are all superficial things that don't affect the car itself. No, and, you know, and structurally, you've put some big hits on it. Oh, the back corner, the back lifting corner wheels, like I said, the rope rail here. But, but it's all... Bailey rolled his canopy car onto yeah. his canopy the other day, which was kind of Fully cool Fully caved us. in the door, so and then we him. flipped it back over, it just popped back out. How good? How's that? Yeah. I was we thought it was gone, but yeah. it just yeah. nothing. He didn't enjoy it by <laughs> the looks of things, but that's, that's another story. Uh, inside, we can show you inside the glorious car. Big Benny sorted this seat out. Well, you sorted it out with Ben. What's that one? Yeah, so in here we're running a Shilman seat. Um, this is fully adjustable to you, I, yeah. anyone that drives this. So you can adjust the bolsters and everything in there. Super comfortable. It's a bit harder than your standard seat. Yeah. So from what we were, I was 
my understanding is you want a bit bit harder seated on the longer trip. So yeah, I don't know how how do you find? It? I I'm, find it's awesome. No, I've lo I've loved that seat. We had XR6 yep. turbo seats that Harry rang up from a wreckers, and we had them in there for a while. Yeah. But th that thing there's changed it. How did it go? And it's actually heated too, eh? Did yes. you have that on in the high country or didn't No, it? we didn't get it in time. No. But yeah, it is heated. Be nice yeah. if it was cooled because the yeah, AC yeah. in here is not that Questionable. great. Questionable. <laughs> it's and like, then, and it's then like you an went... asthmatic with a straw, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. then you went crazy on, on the rest of the things like your centre console here. Yeah. So the centre you know, console is, is a two dollar fifty paint tray. Yeah, it's a carry all. It's a carry all from Bunnings, <laughs> which is good. And it used to actually be um uh, zip tied down, but even those zip ties are gone now, which yeah. is pretty wild. Adds a bit of character. We just got the quad lock little mount, which yeah. I've found the <laughs> I don't work for them, but it's the only one that hasn't broken. <laughs> yeah, it, it works really well. Yeah, I've been through a few. Phone. Um, one stone armrest boy, inside as well. Honestly, Jock gives me that much grief about these things. Yeah, but, but in a Land Cruiser? Oh my God. You, have, get a, you yeah, can get a close up on that dint because you've dinted I've through dinted the, the window. inside of the door somehow. How did you do that? <laughs> did you do that? <laughs> yeah. We yeah. don't need to discuss those okay. minor details, man. No, no. No, very good. So. Other than that, it's not it's not a glamorous place to live, but look, it does the job. It does the job, and when you're in it, you're having a good time, so yeah, you're, you're never really, worried about you're it. You're not thinking about that. Nah. And like I've, we've seen the water in it go above the pedals, like it just loves it. It's such a good <laughs> thing. So as uh, the yeah. time has come to rattle off the big number. Yeah, so we've, we bought the car. What was 110 originally? Yep. And then you got all the trips, the Kimberley, Cape. High country, yep. all those things. And on average, every trip, yeah. about 6K, 5, 6K worth of repairs. Yeah. Plus the mods and bits and pieces and yeah, all the rest and of it. And ongoing so bits and pieces. The number hurts my soul. Yeah. But what, what do you reckon? I know. You know? I think it's I know. It's a big number. I was somewhere between 2 and 250. Yeah. And then I got told. So. Well, what we did at the Brizzy Four Wheel Drive Show, we had a guessing competition. Yeah. And to, to see how much it cost yeah yeah and dylan white congratulations dylan yeah one did he spot on i didn't tell him the answer no. either i promise you two was... you can say it <laughs> it's, it's 282 for this car to live it's for the last 282 thousand dollars and Australian. that's probably ongoing it's that's it's not going to keep end. growing yeah well, we haven't fixed any of your yeah, yeah, damage yeah, yeah. yet either, so yeah. that's fine. But yeah. 282, that comes in on our marketing spend, that comes in on our R&D budget, which we is just massive. massive. So we really, really push that sort of thing. Yeah. And that's money well spent, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's a great car. Yeah. I don't know that um, we're going to get that back if we ever go to sell it. No. But I don't, I don't think, think so. I'd ever sell it. I think, you don't want to sell this car. No. Nah, it's icon. Yeah, I'd put it in a bubble somewhere and... Yeah, That'll but Dylan White, we'll reach out to you. We have one, one of merch patch pack. Yeah. So yeah, spot on, 282. I don't know how he guessed that. Nah, there's a lot of numbers out there. Yeah. I was telling people to get down to the sense at the show. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I guess that's it, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an ongoing cost for us. Yeah. And what we do in our R&D program. Yeah. But I guess if you've got any questions about any of the products, or anything on this car. Yeah, yeah. Drop them in the comments below and Timmy and I can get back to you on, on it. Yeah. And Answer let us know questions. what more you want to see. If you want yeah. to see more about this car, if you want to see it get trash, you want to see a walkthrough on any customers of our cars. other vehicles, customers' cars. Yeah. Yeah, we're what do you want more to see? than happy. Let us know. Yeah, please. Cheers, guys. Cheers.